Welcome back to Movie Recaps. Today I will show you a horror film from 2019, entitled Countdown. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. A few young people can be seen sitting around a table at a house party. The girls talk about counting calories, so one of them shows an app on her phone for keeping track of your food intake. The other one wants to download it, but searching for that app she finds another one called Simply Countdown. The others asks about it and she reads the description which states that it can tell you exactly when you're going to die. All of them, except Courtney, want to make a drinking game out of it, with the one with the least to live will drink everything that's on the table. Courtney reluctantly does it too and accepts the terms and conditions. They go around the table and everyone gets 60 to 30 years of life. Courtney looks upset as she shows them that she only has 3 hours to live. The rest make fun of her and tell her that she has to abide by the rules of the game and drink, when her boyfriend Evan comes over and drinks instead of her. Later, the two of them are going over to his car. He's visibly drunk. When they enter, she asks him to walk her to her house and not drive home, but he doesn't want to. She gets out and starts walking, while he tries to convince her to come back in and when he doesn't succeed, he dives off angrily. Courtney gets a message from the app, saying she's broken the user agreement. As she continues walking it looks like somebody is following her. The app says she has less than two minutes to live, prompting her to run into her house, as the app continues to blare on her phone. She powers it off. Courtney walks into the bathroom and becomes increasingly paranoid, so she checks the shower curtain. Then she goes to drink some water, but hears the curtains move again. She turns around, but something grabs her from above and drops her on the shower, breaking her head. She dies when the countdown timer runs down to zero. Meanwhile, Evan was in a car accident and the passenger's seat where Courtney was supposed to be is completely trashed. Quinn can be seen exiting an elevator, rolling a nurse's cart through a hospital. She walks into a room, discovering that one of the patients hasn't finished his lunch. She knows where to find him. He's sitting on a balcony in a closed wing of the hospital. It's Evan. She sits with him and tries to make small talk to relax him for surgery, but he shows her the countdown app, which says that he has only around 19 hours left. He tells her about the app and his girlfriend, convinced that it knew when she was going to die. Evan thinks that the app also knows that he will die during his surgery. Quinn tells him not to worry about the app and makes him come back to his room. They meet Amy on the way and she tells Quinn to come with her. The hospital staff surprises her with a cake because she passed the nurse's test. As they're sitting and eating cake, Quinn jokes about the app and some of the others have already heard about it. They laugh about it when Scott gets more than 50 years to live and so does Dr. Sullivan. Suddenly, a man walks in carrying a woman that's overdosing. The doctor checks her right there on the floor and Amy tells Quinn to bring the kit with the drugs to counteract what she's taken. Amy administers it to the woman and she wakes up. Later, Quinn is leaving work, when she gets an ad for the app. She downloads it and enters her information, agreeing to the terms. The app tells her that she has little over two days to live. Suddenly Dr. Sullivan walks into the elevator and flirts with her, but she tries to let him off easy. That night, Quinn is at home finishing her nursing documents, when she runs into a problem. She calls Scott to ask for help and he tells her that she'll need to enter the information from her birth certificate. Quinn doesn't have it with her, but she knows where to find it. She goes to get it from her parents' house. Once there, she sifts through her mom's papers and finds it on the bottom of the pile. Something moves in the closet behind her and when she opens it, she finds her sister Jordan there, along with her boyfriend. He puts his clothes on and leaves, but Quinn scolds her sister about it. Jordan is angry with her for parenting her and not coming over to see her more often after their mom died. Quinn goes to her room to apologize and tell her about finishing her studies, when her father wakes and comes to greet her. He's happy to see Quinn and asks her if she wants to come with them to visit her mom's grave one day. The next day, Evan is preparing for his surgery and sees that he has around three minutes to live. He leaves the room and the app pushes a notification on his phone telling him he's broken the agreement. Evan sees a deathly figure behind him in the mirror, but no one's there in real life. He escapes to the stairwell, but it follows. The app continues to notify him of the countdown. Evan can't get out of the dark stairwell, when he hears footsteps inside the stairwell. He uses the light on his phone, but can't see anyone downstairs. Evan looks up and thinks he sees Courtney, but it's something else and it's coming after him. His phone drops down the stairs and when the countdown reaches zero, he falls down too. A little later, Quinn comes to work and Amy informs her about Evan. She remembers the app and seems disturbed. Then Quinn goes to his room and when she sees her colleague packing it up, she tells her that she'll take over. She finds his phone and realizing she needs his fingerprint to open it, goes to see his body in the basement facility. Quinn tries to open his phone with his thumb, but because it doesn't work she tries again with his face. 
She opens his eyes and manages to open the phone finally, only to see the countdown has reached zero. Suddenly, his hand falls and touches her, so she drops the phone. When she picks it up, his head is turned and he's looking at her. She puts the body back inside the freezer. Quinn checks her phone to see that she has less than two days to live and the countdown time is at the same hour when she'll meet her father and sister at her mother's grave. She calls her dad and cancels their plan. The app sends her a notification that she's broken the user agreement, when there's a figure in the room she passes. She comes back and no one's there. Suddenly, Dr. Sullivan scares her. He asks her to help with a patient, but she has trouble with a machine. She wants to leave and he stops her trying to awkwardly comfort her. The doctor makes another advance on her and she declines, but he keeps going. When she pushes him off, he pseudo-apologizes, so she goes to find nurse Amy and tell her about what's happened. Before she can say anything, the doctor calls for Amy and she doesn't get to tell her. The app flashes another notification. That night, Quinn tries to delete the app, but can't so she searches for it online and finds information about Courtney. She watches a video from a girl ranting about the app, saying that she's seeing things, like her dead cousin. Suddenly, the girl says her time is up, then she sees something, screams and drops her phone. The comments under the video say it's a fake, so Quinn relaxes a little bit and shuts her laptop, when suddenly she sees dead Evan. Her phone pushes another notification, so she breaks it, but it still shows the countdown. Quinn gets in her car and falls asleep there. Jordan wakes her up in the morning. The two of them go up to her apartment and her sister finds her smashed up phone, seeing the app and telling her she only has one more day to live. She jokes with her when she figures out the app and then asks to stay with her, because their dad went on a last minute work trip. When Quinn refuses, Jordan storms out. The app beeps again and she scratches her finger on the broken screen. Later, she's in a shop, buying a new phone. Quinn opens it even before the guy can run her card. She gets a completely new phone and SIM card, so she checks if the app is there. When she doesn't see it, she goes to leave, but another notification arrives and the app is on the new phone as well. She asks the guy about the app and he tries to delete it, but can't. When she finally leaves, one of the other customers asks the store guy about the app. Quinn is in her car, checking the app which has continued to count down, then suddenly sees a deathly figure in her back camera. It can only be seen there. Suddenly, it grabs her from the back seat and she rams into another car, falling out of her own. The guy from the other car screams at her, while the customer from the store walks out and tells him to stop. He scares him away, then shows her he also has the app. Later, they're seen in a bar, talking about it. She says they should find a way to see the user agreement for the app again and Matt tells the crazy guy in the bar to download it. They go over to him and when he reaches the terms and conditions page, Quinn starts reading them. It says that they have to accept their fate. The crazy guy still agrees to the terms and the app tells him that he'll live to 91. Quinn and Matt go to the hospital and speak to the priest. They ask him what he knows about demons, but he says that he doesn't believe in them and sends them to someone else. Before they leave, Amy asks to talk to Quinn. Matt goes to the restroom. Someone wants to get inside his stall and he sees a barefoot child under the door. As he's washing his hands, he hears someone crying in one of the stalls and when he goes to check, he sees the barefoot kid again, walking through the stalls like there's nothing in between. It stops at the last stall. The lights go out and Matt goes to check the stall. There is nothing in there, but something appears behind him and calls his name. It attacks him and when the lights come back on, it isn't there anymore. Meanwhile, Amy takes Quinn to a meeting with HR and Dr. Sullivan. He says that she was the one to corner him and not the other way around. The man from HR says that she'll get suspended, when Quinn starts explaining her side of the story. Amy confronts her, but Quinn storms out. Matt is waiting for her and he doesn't tell her what's happened. He keeps hearing the voice of the thing that attacked him. They walk into a church looking for the man the other priest told them about. They find him in his office. He's super excited that they ask him about demons and immediately thinks of an ancient story. In it, a prince gets a scroll from an old gypsy woman, foretelling the exact hour in which he would die. She heeds him a warning that he mustn't use the information to alter his fate. But the prince still does and goes back to the gypsy, telling her that death is after him. She tells him that it's not death but a demon that will torture him until the moment he dies as the scroll foretold. He tells them to find someone to hack the app for them. They go to the store guy, Derek for help and bribe him to help them. He knows the app and makes fun of them for believing it, but he still hacks it for them. The code for the app is in Latin. They also find the countdowns for all the people using the app inside the code, including Derek's. He changes all the parameters for his countdown, then looks for Quinn when they find her sister's countdown too. 
Her clock is almost the same as hers, though so Derek changes it. Jordan sees the change on her phone, but the woman who's watching her, takes her phone. Matt and Quinn thank Derek for changing their countdowns as he's driving away. Then Quinn asks Matt to stay with her that night. They are getting ready for bed and even leave the lights on because they're still sacred. Matt tells her a story about his dead brother and she tells him about her mom. They were both bad to them before they died. The two of them are sleeping in the bed, when the lights go out. Quinn hears something in front of the room and tries to wake Matt up, but the demon is the one in bed with her. When the real Matt takes off her covers, the demon disappears. The app still goes back to their original countdown. Quinn remembers her sister's countdown. Meanwhile, Jordan hears her phone ring in the old woman's room and goes to get it. She sees that her countdown has changed, when something appears in front of her room. Jordan goes to check it out and the lights go out again. She goes back into her room and closes the door, but when she turns around the door is open. Then, she hides under her bed and hears her mom calling to her, asking for her sister. Something pushes her bed aside and suddenly, her dead mother appears. Jordan runs to the front door and Quinn and Matt are there. They go to see the demon priest again. He reads the code in Latin for them. It's a curse that he can find a way to break and lift from them. He thinks that if they can keep one of them alive longer than what the app says, the curse will be broken. His plan is to hide in a blessed circle of salt long enough to keep one of them alive, so that they can lift the curse. Quinn mixes the salt with paint and as they are laying it on the ground, the priest blesses the salt. The circle is painted on the floor, when they check Mott's countdown timer. He steps aside, panicking, but Quinn kisses him. The lights go out and all of them get inside the circle. As the demon approaches, the priest is praying. The demon appears behind them, but it can't get inside the circle. The priest tries to vanquish it back to hell, when the app starts blaring. Suddenly, a toy robot reaches the circle that only Matt can see. His brother appears and lures him out of the circle. The demon grabs him and drags him away. Quinn runs after him, but as she reaches Matt, a car hits him and he dies with the countdown. Jordan is hurt, so Quinn takes her to the hospital. As a doctor is taking care of her sister, one of her colleagues tells her that she knows what happened with Dr. Sullivan and that she will be with her if she goes after him. They hug, but Quinn sees the doctor talking to her sister and goes over there. She thanks him, but has some kind of plan for him. Jordan tells Quinn that their mother's death was her fault and not Quinn's, but she says it's none of their fault. The two of them reconcile and Jordan says that at least they will spend the last minutes of their lives together. Quinn doesn't think they will die, because she has a plan. She goes into Dr. Sullivan's office and apologizes to him, manipulating him. He sees right through her and asks her what she wants. She says she wants her job back and tells him to follow her into the closed wing. Moments later, the doctor walks in and looks for her around the closed wing, finding pieces of her clothing on the ground. Quinn is playing a game with him. Suddenly, she hits him with a wrench and wants to inject him with morphine, when Jordan shows up and stops her. The demon drags the doctor away. Quinn thinks that if she kills him before his countdown it will break the curse, so she goes to find him. Jordan looks for her, as her app shows her that she has less than two minutes to live. Suddenly the demon appears behind her. Meanwhile, Quinn is still looking for the doctor, when she hears something. He knocks her out and gets ready to kill her, but she comes after him again. She chases him down, but the demon pushes her away and he escapes. Quinn gets another idea. Simultaneously, Jordan is being chased by the demon. She tries to hide from it, but her app gives her position away. A freezer opens and she goes over to investigate, when the demon grabs her and throws her through a window. Her time is running out as the demon closes in to kill her, when suddenly Quinn shows up with a syringe pushed up against her skin, telling it to let her sister go. Jordan begs her not to kill herself and the demon turns into her mother, diverting her attention. Jordan's time is ticking and Quinn is distracted for a moment, but she realizes what's happening and shoots the morphine in her veins. She dies before her time and the demon can't take her. Quinn has lifted the demon's curse. Jordan cries over her sister's dead body, when she sees the name of a drug written on her arm and a bottle rolling away. She injects it into Quinn's arm and it counteracts the morphine, bringing her back from the dead. Sometime later, Quinn, Jordan and their father visit their mom's gravesite. As they're about to leave, Quinn gets a notification. The beta version of the countdown app has been installed on her phone. In an after credit scene, Derek is seen on a date with a woman in a restaurant. His date is disappointed and goes to the restroom before they leave. Derek gets a notification from the app, counting his minutes down. The lights go out and a demonic sound can be heard, along with Derek's screams. Make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can watch more videos like this. Thanks for watching.